All right, routing in Pro Tools. So first of all, what does routing mean? Well, routing, what it means is basically taking the audio signal and moving it from point A to point B. Uh, <clears throat> by nature, in Pro Tools, what happens is all the audio signals go from each track through the master fader to your speakers. So if I hit play, what's happening is the signal is going from each of these tracks to my master fader over here. And I can see because it says it's going to the playback external headphones. Actually, let me go ahead and just change that real quick. I'm going to change these all to no output and I'm going to go up here to my setup IO. IO stands for input output and I'm going to go ahead and change this to my default settings <coughs> which should I'm just going to call this one mic. Mic is fine. Output external headphones uh, MacBook Air speakers great Luna, stop barking. Over here, bus. I'm going to hit default on this. So now, on my main out playback one and two, I'm going to call this out one dash two. Awesome. And I'm going to hit OK. And now everything on here should say out one dash two, and that will go to my external headphone speakers because that's what I'm plugged into right now. Great. This is a little bit easier for me to see because uh, instead of like, output instead of like playback one and two, I'm gonna call it output one and two. All right, so <clears throat> I've got these here. This is my output. So each track is going over here to this one here. Right, and that's what we're looking at in this picture right here. This picture, I've got all my tracks here. There's a couple things we're looking at here. This I.O. section here, that's the input output. These are all going to my left, right, whatever that is, or one and two, something like that. My main mix bus sent to my main left, right, out. And that's what's happening here. Output one and two, these are all going to my main output over here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if I want to take that signal and split the signal somehow and send it to something else, we can do that right here with the sends A through E. So we can take the signal, we can send it somewhere else. That's gonna be splitting the signal. That's called a send, right? So let's say that I wanna put a, a reverb for my snare drum here. So what I can do is I'm gonna make a new aux channel, stereo aux channel. There we go, stereo aux. I'm gonna call this one reverb. So I've got an aux channel over here, it's stereo. Uh, like 99% of the time, you're going to make stereo aux. Uh, your aux channels are going to be stereo for almost everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the... I'm just trying to get my cable out of the way here. I'm going to put my reverb on an insert here. Doug, what we just learned about in the plugins, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to put a reverb on here. Now the reverb that I'm using is going to be D-verb, it's the one that comes with Pro Tools. I'm going to use a room medium. And this is an insert. Technically it's on the insert here, but we're using it on an aux channel and what we're going to do is we're going to send the signal from the snare drum here. We're going to take the signal and move half of it over here. Okay, so I'm going to go in here, I'm going to say bus one and two, there, and over here, we're going to go bus one and two. Now, once I set up my input here, the input is wherever anything is coming into the track. And then, hold on one second, and then the send is, is an output. So I'm outputting the signal from my snare drum and going into 
my reverb over here because they got the same name on them. Whenever you have anything that's the same name on the buses on Pro Tools, that means they're going to go, they're connected together. That's how you make connections in Pro Tools, the input and the output. So a couple things to take away from this. You always have to have every output has to go to an input or should go to an input if you want to hear it. Every input has to have something feeding into it from an output. You always go from out to in. Just like if I'm if I'm pouring water into a glass, the water is coming out of my pitcher going into the glass. Okay. If I want to send you to go to the store to get me milk, let's say you were hanging out at my house and I'm like, hey, I want some milk and I don't have any milk right now. And you say, I'll go get you milk. I send you out to get milk and you return back in with the milk. So I send you out to get the milk and you return back in to get uh, with the milk. So um, out, in, out, in. These are like, it's it's exactly how Apache Bay works. It's exactly how Apache Bay works, uh, decree. Yeah, 100% correct, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> with this here, this and this is basically how we do patching in Pro Tools. Uh, you, you go from the bus, the name of it is what connects it together. So I could name this anything. I can right click on this, check this out. I can right click on this and rename it and call this one Snare Reverb and hit go. And you see it changed the name over here on the input Snare Reverb, the output over here Snare Reverb because it's the same, it's the connection. It's the same thing, it's, it's, that's what it is. So we're taking this snare reverb and we're just saying, okay, the output is over here, the input is over here, boom, there we go. Now, let me rename this back to bus one and two, just for today. Now, I can send multiple things over here, but before we do that, let's go ahead and, and do this one snare drum. So I got the snare drum. I'm gonna solo out the snare drum. There's my snare drum. Let's put a, Let's put a little compressed compressor on the snare. I'm gonna use the same compressor from the kick drum, but I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Let's use the snare snare comp. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we got that snare drum sound there, and let's, <clears throat> the EQ, not one band EQ, hold on, I'm just going to make the snare drum sound a little bit beefier. I'm going to go ahead and put a multi-band EQ on here. And we'll just grab one of the presets from snare drum. Just go through these and see what they sound like. Okay, let's use let's use this one here. That's kind of like a pop sound to it, a little poppiness to it. Okay, so we got that. Now, let's add some reverb into the snare drum. So the reverb is over here. We've got it sending to the reverb. We've made the connections, but we don't have any level actually going to that reverb. So what's going to happen is this little thing here, if I click on this, it pulls up a fader here on the right-hand side. And this fader, if I move it up, it's gonna send signal over to the reverb. Now, it's important to keep in mind that we're still getting signal to our main output, our master fader here. That's right here, the snare drum here. We've got this snare drum. It's going to the output one and two, so the signal is still going to the master here. What we're doing is we're taking a separate signal and we're sending it over here to this reverb. So let me go ahead and turn this up as it plays. Hear that reverb? That giant hall reverb? It's way too big. There we go, better. And if I wanna hear more reverb, I turn up the level more. Wanna hear less reverb, I bring the level down. So what does this mean? This means that right now, if I have my kick drum and my snare drum, the kick drum is gonna be dry, no effects, and the snare drum is gonna sound wet 
it's gonna have effect on it. I can add more effect or less effect. Here's the important thing to remember is that the reverb is not on the snare drum itself. The reverb is its own separate track as an aux channel over here. We're sending the signal to this aux channel reverb. The signal's still going to our master output. So that means the master output here is this signal coming out of the output right here is a dry signal. And then we're sending a dry signal, another dry signal, over to the reverb here. And this is adding the reverb onto the signal. There's no dry signal here. This is all just reverb. Okay. Let's see this. Let's see this again. What I can do is I can, the reason why we want to have our reverbs on a separate aux channel and not just directly on the track is because I can now send multiple signals to that reverb. So I go over here and I go to send A through E for the kick drum. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to bus one and two. Now you see this one just changed. If I click on it, it's for the snare drum. If I click on it now, it's for the kick drum. How do I know? Up here at the top, it has the name of the track right there. So I can turn this up. We're going to hear that reverb on the kick drum. There's that. Get that snare drum. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. There we go. Cool. There we go. Now if I want to put my hi-hats in here. Hold on, I'm going to go ahead and just loop this one part of the song so we can hear everything. So here's my hi-hats. Let's go ahead and put some uh, some EQ on this one as well. I'm just going to use some presets. If I want these to be a little bit louder, I can just turn them up here. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything down though, so we have a little bit more headroom to play with. There we go. Turn my group on, turn them down. There we go. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Let me let me actually let me undo that and just turn the master down. There we go. Better. Okay. So now with this hi hat here, we're gonna hear the hi hat better with the overheads. Let's turn these up here and these overheads here. Put a little effect on these. Let's put that EQ seven again. Let's see if there's a preset in here for our overheads. There may or may not be drum, room. not drum overheads. There we go. Okay, and you can check these out, you know, on your own if you want to go through and play with these. Let's use this uh, bright and symbols. Uh, let's use this clean overheads one here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna unsolo all this stuff so we can hear our kick drums and stuff like that. Here's our toms. Sounding pretty good. They we can get some more character to them. Reverb on, <laughs> yeah, Decree says, reverb on the kick is very 80s style. Yes, it is very much 80s style, okay? So what I can do with these is, let's say I wanna put all these drums into my little reverb here. Well, what I can do Is <laughs> that's so funny, uh, Carlos? I actually don't know what you're talking about there. <laughs> I guess I'm showing my age. I can just hold down Option and I can just copy Bus One and Two over like this. Let me do that one more time. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all these here. The way you can get rid of a plugin, I realize I forgot to talk about that, is you click on the little arrow key or the little circle here. I'll get rid of that plugin. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is I just hold down my Option key and I just drag it over and it'll make a copy 
into it. And now when we listen to it, we're gonna hear the reverb on all these drums. Cool. Let's go ahead and put the, let's put the decapitator plug in on here, shall we? Yeah, I want to. We're gonna put the decapitator on our toms. We're gonna do it two ways. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. First of all, we're just gonna put it on for each one here. And we're just gonna add a drums. Let's use drum fattener number one. And I'm just gonna turn it down so it's not too overbearing. And I'm just gonna hold down option and drag this onto each one here. See how much better these sound already? It automatically just makes those tom drums sound better. Yeah. Cool, okay. And we can hear we're getting the reverb on everything. Now, we might want the toms to have less reverb. So we can have each one have its own individual send amount like that. The overheads, we may want to have more reverb from the overheads. It really depends. And if you want to, you can actually set this up so you can see all of your reverbs at the same time. Just go to view, uh, where is it? View mix with uh, expanded sends and set that to A. You can have it for all of them. You don't really need it for one at a time though. There we go. Now I can see my send amounts for each level. And remember, the higher this level here, the more it's gonna send it over to the reverb. So let's say we wanna take that reverb off of the kick. There's no kick, although there's still some reverb coming from the, the, uh, the overhead, which is actually fine. We really don't want that sound though. That's like, as Decree pointed out, that's like a very 80s type of sound. Okay, now what if overall we are, um, there's too much reverb overall, right? Would I have to go through and turn each one of these down by hand one at a time? That, that seems like it would be pretty annoying, right? Well, it would be very, very annoying. So what we can do, and this is the other reason why it's really great to have your reverb on a, as a send effect and not on every single uh, channel is because if my reverb is too much overall, all I have to do is turn it down on the aux return track right here. And there we go. I'm going to put that decapitator over here too, though. Let's see. Let's put it like this. Remember the order matters, right? There we go. Oh, much better. Yeah. Cool. All right, so now if I turn my reverb down, here's our dry sound, no reverb. And if I pull this up, I can add more reverb into it. So we have full control over the sound of our reverb here. Now, this is great, um, sounds really good so far, but remember we had this mono, overhead mono sound in here. Let's go ahead and just turn this back on here. <clears throat> Let's listen to this one. That's got like kind of a, a telephony type of sound to it which is pretty cool, but I can actually recreate the sound so it doesn't have all the artifacts and stuff in it. We can recreate it using all these, but we have to do a couple of things first. So what I'm gonna do is, for I'm gonna get rid of this one. Hi to make it active. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make a new aux channel and we're gonna make it mono. And this is like I said before, 98% of the time you're gonna make your aux channel stereo, well this is the 1% where you're gonna make it mono because we wanna, we want a very specific mono sound, right? So I'm gonna go in here and make this a mono aux input. I'm gonna call this one drum effect. And on here, let's go up here. Oh, let me get rid of the stuff in the top here. 
I don't need the instrument thing. Okay, so up here, up top, what I can do is I can say, let's use a distortion. And I'll just use the distortion that comes with it. Uh, yeah, this one should be fine. And then let's use an EQ after that to kind of create this like sound. So we're gonna use the distortion and then we're gonna use an EQ. We could use a filter also, but uh, I'm just gonna use this EQ kind of as a filter-ish. I'm gonna use the high cut and the low cut. I'm gonna go over here like this, like this. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I wanna show you how you can set this stuff up as well. and use our sins for this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a new set of sins. We've got our aux input right here. And we're gonna go input bus three. Now you notice how it says the bus one and two left and right. Uh, so here we're gonna use bus three here. The reason why it's doing like this is because really, realistically you need to have um, your bus, buses are, in, in Pro Tools it matters like mono versus stereo. In Logic, it doesn't matter. In Ableton Live, it doesn't really matter. Ableton Live doesn't even use buses. Uh, in Pro Tools, it matters left and right versus uh, you know a stereo. So it's going to say left and right for this one here. I think if I renamed it to bus 1 and 2, that's bus 12, though. Yeah, if I rename this, hold on. I don't know. It probably, it probably won't do it. It's probably going to be like, oh, you're going to bus 1-2. It's still probably going to be left and right. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, cool. All right. So, oh, it's okay. It is still, yeah. In, in this mono one, it's going to be kind of weird because I've renamed it and stuff like that. That's You're not going to see it like that normally. But what I want to do is now I want to send these tracks over to bus three for this distortion here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here. I'm going to say output uh, out bus three. Boom. And I'm just going to turn this up to here. And I just want them all to be basically the same level. So I'm just going to send them uh, across. But before I do that, I'm also going to hit this pre button here. And the pre button is for pre fader. And I'll come back and talk about that in just a second. But before that, we're going to do this, send this across here. I'm going to turn it down. And now if we listen to this, now we have this distorted sound in here. And I have this kind of control over it to give it this kind of mid mid range stuff. But let's go in here. We don't want it to be super distorted like this, right? That's like too far. Just like this kind of a sound here. And we can adjust the high low here. You hear how it's giving that that sound? And I've got it pretty loud in the mix right now. Like this is like pretty loud up in that mix. Let's just put it in here to give it a little bit of mid range. You see how that just kind of gives it a little bit of thickness in the mid range there? We can pull this down even if we wanted to. So it fills in some of the other frequencies. And this is how we can really thicken up these drums uh, in a different way. And, and also let's send this over to the reverb, shall we? So I'm just gonna take this, hold down option, drag it over. Nice. Yeah, cool. Okay. What we don't want to do, what you could do, but you don't want to do, is you don't want to send bus three. You don't want to, you don't want to take this one and, and option drag it over. Because if you have this one going to bus three, what's that mean? It means it's going to be coming into itself. Okay. Now, here's the thing, is I just did that pre-fader. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I, mono, if I mute all these tracks, now we're going to hear just the drums, the, 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 the distortion. Why are we hearing just the distortion? Well, the reason why is because 
this send effect, even though it's a send effect, we've got it happening before this fader. This send right here is happening after the fader. Now, we, this is like a, a, a thing that's really important to kind of wrap your heads around eventually. If you don't really get it today, I understand. But basically, with most uh, send effects, you want them to be post fader. Meaning if I turn down my snare drum, I don't want it to continue sending to my reverb here. Let me go ahead and just unmute the snare drum and, and so we can listen to this. So here it is. If I turn my snare drum down, we no longer hear anything because it's no longer sending any signal to my reverb because the fader here is before this fader here. But if I push this pre button here, now, when they're up like this, it sounds basically the same. But if I turn this one down, watch what happens, or listen to what happens. Now, we're only hearing the reverb because this signal is before, this sending the signal is before this fader here. So, when we hit this pre button, pre button is right, right here. There it is. Or if you have this open, if you have this one open, uh, you can see on this one here on the side, it's up here, pre. And and what's happening is it's sending the signal before this fader. Let me just, I've got a picture in here I wanna show you. I think it's in here. Yes, wait, uh, no, it's not in here. It's it, This is kind of, this is a little bit weird. I don't love this picture here. But the insert effects, if you have like a guitar player, the guitar player's on a stage and their guitar is plugged into the amplifier and then you've got a, uh, uh, you got the speaker. Well, the reason, the way you get this into your, your, your system is you use the microphone and it records the whole signal. And then you can send that signal to a reverb, uh, which comes in on a different track and they both, you mix them. If you have, in, if you have pedals on that, guitar cable, those are like insert pedals. They're changing the sound of the guitar. The reverb is on the whole thing. Um, this isn't, but this isn't like, it's not the best for our pre-fader versus non-pre-fader. I've got, somewhere else I've got another picture in here. Um, unfortunately, I can't plug in my iPad to my computer and just draw for you, which I gotta figure that out. Actually, let me make a note to myself about that for later. Mental note to self plugging your iPad into your computer. <laughs> um, but basically, if I turn this off now, when I hit play, we're not gonna hear anything because now this signal sending to my reverb over here is after my fader down here. So if I turn this up, now we're hearing the signal with the reverb. So for, for send effects, like reverb, delay, stuff like that, you always want it to be post fader, the default setting. But in this case, we're doing this like weird special effect for this drum effects down here. So I just want this to be the signal for my weird effect, this distortion effect. I don't want it to be controlled by how this mix is over here with the individual drums. So I have it set for pre, and you can see the little light on the beginning is blue. See that? If I hit the pre button, this little input light is, is blue. That means it's in pre-fader mode. So what I can do with all these is go here to uh, view, go to expanded sins A and B. And I'm just gonna turn off the pre for all of these. There we go. I hold down option, click it, and it's good to go. Now notice how I'm turning this down. If I have it like this, we can really hear it very clearly, but we don't want to hear this. This isn't uh, an effect that we're putting in here to hear it clearly. We're putting this effect in here to thicken up the drums, to make them thicker, not so people notice it. So if people are noticing, if somebody says, oh wow, it sounds like you've got some distortion in the drums, that's bad. You don't want them to say that. You want them to be like, wow, those drums are nice and thick. Yeah, thanks. I, you know, my drums are always nice and thick like that. So here it is without the distortion. Right, there it is with the distortion. It just sounds like there's like a thickness in there. It doesn't sound like distorted drums. 
Right, we don't want that distorted drum sound. We want it just to sound thicker. Cool. So this is this is a mix thing, um, and you can you know obviously please learn from this. Um, but really, why I'm showing you this is because I want you to understand how the busing works. We've got bus three on the outputs of the sends here, and then bus three going to the input on this channel, and I put the distortion on here. So that's what's going on with this. And then uh, with these here, they should actually all be. There we go. I want them to all be pre. Okay, now um, what I want to do next is I want to take all of these drums and I want to group them together. Now, this is a thing that we're going to be talking about in more detail later on. Really what I want to do is not talk about the why we're doing it. What I want to talk about is how to do it. Okay, and, and so keep this in mind for later on because we're going to come back and we're going to talk about all this stuff. It's definitely in the notes if you want to go looking for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another aux channel. I'm gonna call this one drum group. And you notice how I'm abbreviating everything. I always do this, I always abbreviate everything. And I'm gonna set my input here to bus five and six because I'm not using bus five and six for anything yet. Now what I'm gonna do is all of my drums and my effects and my reverb and everything, I'm gonna set them to all go to bus five and six from the output here. Now what is this gonna do? This is gonna change it so that everything is now going through the drum group aux before it gets to my master aux. I'm gonna keep this drum group aux to output one and two, so it's still gonna to go to my master fader here. Everything else, I'm gonna shift it so it goes to bus five and six. Here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna click on the output, I'm gonna set it to bus five and six for every single track. And it's gonna take a second. I'm gonna show you a short way to do this in just a minute. But here's what we do, we just go through, every single track, just set it to bus five and six. So what this means is that now everything is gonna be going through this aux fader. And there's a really good reason for this, which I'm gonna just explain really briefly. So now I've got everything going to bus five and six, everything's in here bus five and six, so now check this out, watch. If somebody says, hey, your drums are too loud, I say, cool, and I turn them down and I can turn my drums down as much as I want with just grabbing this one fader right here. Now, that's really cool, but that's not the whole story. The rest of the story, just real quick, again, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go too deep on this. I don't wanna answer a lot of questions about this today, but the other half of the story is if I go over here and I go to, uh, let's do a search for SSL. Oh, it's all UID, okay, hold on a second. Let's do another, hey, whoa, whoa. Let's do another search for bus compressor. And let's use the, so, okay, we'll use this one from Native Instruments, Solid Bus Compressor Stereo. So this is the, this is the SSL bus compressor, basically, it's the emulation of it. Um, this is basically like that bus compressor that's on the Audient. Remember we talked about the bus compressor on the Audient? I said, you can't use it as a, it's not an insert on the track, it's only on the mix, left, right, mix bus. Well, this is the plugin version of the SSL version of it. So I'm gonna go in here, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go to drum bus. And now what you're gonna notice is this thing here. I can really change the sound of my drums. A lot by adding this compression in. And this pulls everything together. Now you can see also we're kind of clipping everything because it's like four, this will make up gain of four. So I'll just turn these down here. But it really can smack these things up. Let me turn these up here. Just toms. I want more tom sound. Cool. Pull this back a little bit. Yeah, so now we're, we're good with this. So this is like, the, the cool thing about this is once you learn how to do this stuff, this is really what elevates your mixes up to the next level. This really gives you a level up. So what we did 
was we've got everything, including our reverb and our effects and everything, going into this bus, this uh, aux channel here, and the aux channel uh, has this bu uh, effect on it, it has this drum bus uh, compressor. This so if I pull it down, now we're not hearing it at all. And you could put any kind of effects on here. You could do all sorts of stuff. Another one, I don't, I don't have my audio interface plugged in right now. I could do that. I probably should, so I can show you all some SS, some UAD uh, plugins. The UAD plugins are great, and actually they just uh, have an update for it. So I need to download that and see what else is going on. Um, <clears throat> but, but essentially. Yeah, it helps your sound overall. It kind of pulls everything together. People talk about glue, the glue that like holds it together. What it's really doing is making all these individual sounds, now kind of making them all kind of affect each other so they sound like a drum kit and not eight individual drum sounds. Cool. All right, and I think that is a good place for us to stop talking about... Um, a good place for us to stop talking about this stuff. Oh, one last thing, actually. Solo safe. My notes. Thank you, notes. Solo safe. I did this a couple times, and I did it without really showing you what I was doing. It's it's super cool, Carlos. Super super cool. Um, here the drum group here. I didn't do it on this one yet because I wanted to show you. See how these are grayed out right here. This is what we call solo safe. Solo safe essentially means that there the audio is always going to pass through no matter what. So right now, if I have everything going to my drum group here and I solo my kick drum, watch what happens. Nothing. Because this drum group, which is everything is going through the drum group now, we're not soloed. So I would have to solo the drum group as well to hear everything, right? Same thing with like reverbs. For example, if I have my snare drum soloed and my, my drum group, we're no longer hearing, you know, hold on, let me unsolo save this one, there we go. We're no longer hearing the reverb on the snare drum because the snare drum reverb, the, the reverb is not soloed. See, and I just, I just soloed it. You can hear what a difference it makes. The problem is, I don't want to always have to stop and solo out my reverbs and my, 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 my aux channels and stuff like that. So what we should do is you should always solo safe your aux channels. Hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a Windows machine and click the S button, click the S button, click the S button. That's solo safe. It means that the audio is always going to pass through. And, um, and so if I solo my snare drum, now I hear it with the reverb. No reverb, reverb. Cool. All right. Great. I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. I'm going to do save as Sharphand Joe routing effects EA Elastic Audio routing effects 2105 uh, AM. Boop. There we go. Cool. So I think we are good. Let's go ahead and stop the recording here.